Hey guys, Connor here from CameraStore.com, joined by Nico from Camera Rescue. Today we have a pretty interesting video. We're going to be talking about cheap SLR film cameras. So we're going to specifically target the $100, 100 euro range. They're basically equal in value right now, so that's, you know, it works for both currencies. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just start talking. I have quite a few examples here that I've built using our store, CameraStore.com, so it is possible even on our site. SLRs are the dominant camera type and have been for, you know, uh, decades, basically, since the release of the Nikon F in 1959. But as film cameras are getting more expensive, it can be hard for beginners and people who don't know a ton about film cameras to find good deals. So you hear about the AE-1, you hear about the Pentax K1000, you hear about these very popular cameras that are rising in value quite quickly, um, but are still the recommendation for newcomers in a lot of uh, instances. So we've prepared some alternatives and some other cameras that you can get for quite a bit less that will still give you great film experience and film photos. Yeah, I think the hype with the recommended cameras has always been the entry-level cameras that are easy to learn, Pentax K1000, AE1, and so on, because mm -hmm. they kind of teach you. I think there's a lot of cameras that are often, you know, basically overlooked because of their looks or other reasons, but that are very, very, very good and equally decent uh, to be used. So hopefully this will help a lot of new people coming into film uh, be able to get in, in a budget. For the new people, we'll just briefly cover what an SLR is, uh, because you might not know. And I'm saying SLR, and you're like, what does that even mean? Uh, SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex, which means that it has one lens, single lens, and reflex, meaning it has a mirror inside of it that redirects light through the lens up through this bump on top into a viewfinder on the back. Uh, where you put your eye. So you're seeing directly through the lens. Um, and uh, most SLRs are also interchangeable lens, meaning you can take them off and put on a different lens. Uh, this gives them pretty great versatility compared to other camera types. Uh, and that's basically why they became the dominant camera instead of rangefinders or TLRs or cameras that are a bit more niche with their use. So if you're looking to buy your first film camera or your 40th film camera. You have quite a few options these days. You can often find them at secondhand stores. You can find them, you know, from relatives and people that are just giving them away. You can find them um, on eBay, online, or you can find them from camera stores like us. Um, all of these stores have their pros, their cons, their merits, um, and the situation that you'd want to buy from them. But the reality is the vast majority of places selling cameras don't test properly or even at all. Um, you know, obviously your mom's friend on Facebook is not going to um, be testing the cameras using period-appropriate machinery. Uh, but even a lot of camera stores aren't using these machines that were the industry standard at the time. Um, there's a lot of seems good and excellent plus 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 that, you know, is a bit of a meme at this point, but is, is really, really common. When you're buying online, you have to at least know the basics, and there's actually an article on camerastore.com on like the basics, but like listening to the shutter and asking them to show you, you know, the open camera to see the light seals, mm -hmm. things like that. If the lenses have haze or yeah. fungus, it's a pretty easy thing to see on your own. Mm -hmm. And if you're a secondhand store, like a, you know, basically charity stores or anything like that, you should know some basics. But if you're buying there, just Take it with a pinch of salt, like, you know, grain of salt that it might not be uh, in great working condition. And if it's your first camera, you kind of want to get good results because if not, you'll burn out yeah. and then you won't enjoy photography. Uh, so try to buy from somewhere that at least gives you some warranty. Yeah, and, and that's a, a really important thing is that a lot of newcomers, you know, they'll buy a camera or get a camera secondhand and it won't be tested and they shoot three or four rolls before they get it processed, and they're really disappointed with the results and end up putting the hobby on the shelf because the camera didn't work properly. Yep. Um, and, you know, we don't like to see that. We like to see new people coming into this hobby and, and having a good experience. Yeah, I mean, for some people, you know, it's exciting to find a camera for really cheap. Uh, even if it's not working, maybe they can fix it. Maybe there's something they can do. And maybe you do get good photos. Um, but even if you do get good photos, it's likely not working 100% properly. Um, just from what we see, the vast majority of cameras that come in are not working up to our standards. Sourcing reliable cameras can be difficult and expensive. Um, 
our, our store, for example, we use you know top of the line industry standard testing uh, using period appropriate machinery and professional. You know, we have a team of professional testers back behind me. Um, but our cameras are more expensive because of that. Uh, we have to charge more to pay their salaries, to pay for the space that we occupy, and to buy cameras from, from people all over the world. That being said, you can still find cheap cameras on our site, and all of these kits that I've assembled before you are um, sub $100 with a camera and a lens, and they will give you great, great images. So. It's definitely possible. You just sort of have to know where to look. Which is usually not on the recommended from everybody. It's yeah. more like looking into the fungly uh, <laughs> SLR cameras. It, and it's it, there's no wrong with them, just basically that they're not on the most uh, trending blogs or YouTube videos. And as a person creating content online all the time, like it's easy to go for those that are SEO friendly mm -hmm. and not go for the non-SEO friendly cameras. But there are a lot of fun cameras that will give you great results that just don't really yeah. uh, make it to the lists because there were so many cameras produced. So yeah. just keep an eye on. And I think we can start immediately with the examples that we have. You yeah. made a little selection of different families or categories mm -hmm. of cameras in the sub 100. Mm -hmm. um, where do we start? Yeah, so um, if, if you're looking for a, a cheap SLR, there are sort of, I have these archetypes that I came up with. Um, we have third-party cameras, we have smaller manufacturers, and we have autofocus. So we'll, we'll go through some examples from each of them and talk about the pros and the cons, the reasons why you'd want one of these cameras, um, and what you can get for $100. So let's start. We'll go right in with this Shinon CP7M which is a, a third-party camera. Uh, third-party companies didn't have their own lens mount, so they had to license out a mount from another company. That's pretty common with Pentax K and M42 specifically. Um, companies like Shinon, Vivitar, Cosina use these mounts from Pentax or other companies who designed M42 um, and made some great cameras, uh, often as a budget alternative to the main manufacturer's cameras. So. They still take great photos. You can use a ton of lenses because the, the mount was open, so many possibilities. And they still occupy that same budget niche that they had before. So, yeah, this Shinon that Nico has in his hands, uh, it's $49 uh, just for the body, $35 for the Vivitar 51.9 on it, and then $15 for that Tokina lens behind it. So the whole kit is $99 with two lenses. And this is a camera with automatic advancing, uh, 80 style, which, you know, some people like, some people don't like. I really like it. Um, and it has four different program modes, uh, you know, all of the different modes that you could want. It's just a great camera. I actually, I took it out and shot a roll with it just for the sake of this article. So we can throw some sample images or at least one here. Uh, you can get great photos with it, you know. If I told you they were from a Canon A1, I'd probably get more clout on Instagram but uh, they were with a Shinon CP7 because yeah. I don't have that much money. Yeah, <laughs> and one thing to note is when you're searching for film cameras to start, there's brands that have endured the, the, the film transition to digital, mm -hmm. and those names always get more clicks, be it Canon, Nikon, Pentax, and so on. Mm -hmm. Those will always have a bit more searches, but if you go for brands that didn't make it, like uh, Shinon or Tamron or Konica and stuff like that, you will get more options that are not so high in search for. Minolta also is one of those brands that got absorbed by Sony and then Sony basically killed them out. Um, but you can find that. So if you're looking for a very, very cheap Nikon, it exists, but you have less chances from these more unknown in today's you know, brands uh, you know, options. Yeah, and, and you'll see that sort of throughout the range where we're, we're using brands that aren't Canon Nikon, Pentax, the, the, the most popular and the most iconic names um, because that's where you get the best deals. So moving on, the next one on our list is the Vivitar XV1. And this is sort of if the Shinon's 80 style and automatic advancing and all the program modes don't appeal to you, you're looking for a more manual experience. This is a fully mechanical camera uh, with a manual film advance and really that, that classic styling that you come to expect when you're looking for a film camera, or maybe you know your friends have a film camera, you're looking for one too. 
this really will match that experience. Um, it's full manual only, so not quite as user friendly for a beginner at least, but lots of room to grow. And again, Pentax came out, so tons of lenses out there from Pentax, from Ricoh. This is a, a, a Ricoh 55 millimeter lens on there. Uh, Vivitar has their own lenses. And this kit is uh, $98. Yeah, one thing to note also if you're starting with film photography is don't um, let yourself think that all manual is the best option. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little assistance from a light meter, assistance from program modes really helps you get those first shots, first rolls with decent results, yeah. which again, to not be repetitive, it ensures that you are happy with the experience and then you can dig a little further into manual options and you know manual metering and like yeah. all these things including I mean these are all manual focus but I guess we'll go into uh, yeah, we'll AF it. later but yeah it gives you a bit of that mix of the old school and learning but yeah. also some assistance yeah I mean I do that's there's a big sentiment sentiment online of you know you don't learn anything unless you're shooting full manual which I, I think is absolutely false I mean if I have aperture priority as an option I'm gonna use that yeah we um, all do yeah. Everybody that has aperture priority basically Uses doesn't usually priority. use manual a lot. Now we're going to move on to the second sort of archetype, and that's smaller manufacturers. Um, so we can say, obviously, that, that Shinon and uh, Vivitar are also small manufacturers, but by this I mean small manufacturers that had their own lens mount. Um, so we're talking about Konica, Yashica, even Minolta, which is a pretty well-known name in the film community, is definitely a smaller manufacturer than Canon or Nikon. Um, because they made their own lens mount and they were never as big as those major players, there's less third-party third support, but everything is generally cheaper because it's uh, less sought after and people aren't looking for it as much. So. Yeah, they became what I would consider den mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're lenses that are also being looked for nowadays for cinematography and digital video, and they are usually very decent, but you know, you just can't buy a new version and put it on a new camera, which is an appeal to many. So yeah, the first one we have here is a, a Konica Auto Reflex TC. Uh, this is one of the last uh, manual cameras that Konica made before they started switching to some electronic stuff. Um, it's fully mechanical um, and comes with a, a 52 millimeter f1.8 for a total cost of $98. Um, this is sort of it, this camera we were able to get a nicer lens with like 10 more dollars but I wanted to keep it strictly at 100 um, and that's sort of a trend throughout is that 100 is really like the base um, if you go to 110 or 120 you can start getting much newer lenses that don't have some issues like that lens has some minor scratching uh, nothing that will affect the images but something you know that we make note of on our site and something that you do want to know as a buyer yeah you want to keep in mind that basically that sometimes lenses don't have major issues even if they have a little dust every yeah. lens basically that's been made mm -hmm. that's a few years old even new lenses always have minor yeah. specks of dust that won't affect your images yeah yeah and that's um we actually have a great article also that's about um how dirty your lens can be before you notice the effects of it um, we took some really fungusy, hazy lenses out, and under most situations, you don't notice it at all. Um, it really is shooting directly into the sun, or if your lens is completely destroyed by fungus, um, which isn't so common. So, yeah. These minor issues with, with cameras like this um, are totally usable. Yeah. Minor haze, some dust, some scratching. It really won't affect your images so much unless you're really shooting directly into the sun or really pixel peeping. The Yashica FR2, um, and this comes with a, a 42 to 75 millimeter lens, again, for a total of $98. Uh, this is aperture priority only, so no manual mode at all, which I think is fine for a beginner. Um, it's pretty classic looking. It's that silver SLR, you know, from a distance, people will be like, is that a Canon AE-1? Or, you know, there are a lot of very popular silver cameras, but this is a beautiful camera in its own right. Um, I decided to go for the 42 to 75 in this kit, even though there were 50s, 50 millimeter lenses available, uh, because the 50 millimeters were a lot older and Yashica's single coated lenses, whereas this is a, a multi coated lens that I think will deliver better contrast and color rendition. So for a beginner, I think I might prefer that. Uh, but if we had 15, 20 more dollars, we could have gotten a 50 millimeter lens, which is the pretty 
the standard lens for 35 millimeter SLRs. So they stay under the radar generally, despite making some pretty advanced cameras pushing the envelope of technology. I mean, Konica right there, you know, they invented auto exposure and plenty of other things. They, yep. they had the first 35 millimeter SLR with auto exposure. And I think one thing to note, and you'll notice that if you look at the division between the left and the right, mm -hmm. I guess you're right and you're left, <laughs> um, is these are more vintage looking, mm -hmm. which is an appeal that a lot of people find uh, Film has become a commodity, mm -hmm. and people like having a bit of a, you know, accessory uh, as a camera. <laughs> so these will yield that look. And then we have the left version, which is a bit more of that modern SLR that looks like that kit you get for high school when you graduate. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> and you'll see people on the sidelines of a soccer field <laughs> shooting these kind of cameras. So if you are interested in those looks, like these cameras will provide that you know, appeal that will be nice to hang through your your neck and walk around and take pictures too. But you know, mm -hmm. we all take into consideration a bit of the aesthetic, I think, in film. Yeah. Uh, so this is something to take note. But then we move on to the AF, I think. Didn't you get a camera like this for your high school graduation? You no, know, I didn't really graduate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go there. Well, we'll start with the Minolta. Oh, Minolta's first? So, yeah. The, um, so now we're into autofocus cameras. And just like Nico said, these are maybe not as nice looking, uh, depending on your perspective. Um, yeah, at this point, film is a luxury item, so the cameras are also luxury items and accessories, and that's part of it. It really is. Uh, and if you like cameras for that reason, that's just as valid as wanting to take pictures. But yeah, autofocus cameras are a lot newer. Uh, adding autofocus and making them newer really decreases the value uh, because they're you know, some people would say ugly. Um, I think they're nice in their own way sometimes. Some of them are nice. Um, but I, I would say that they're, they're better for beginners in general and people with little experience because they have autofocus and they have advanced features and the lenses have more modern coatings. And really, if you want your photos to turn out consistently good, these are the best cameras for it. Yeah, I think one thing also to note is if you're beginning and you have like I said, a camera that maybe in your family they're already shooting digital. Yeah. Sometimes you can take advantage of just buying the body and the lenses are still compatible. Mm -hmm. So make sure you kind of maybe dig a little bit into uh, the compatibility yeah. between a Canon EF lens on a film body or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's system videos that I shot a couple years ago that are on our channel, which you can search. So if you look for Canon EF or EFS, you'll notice that one's for crop sensors and yeah. one's not. Those terms seem a little confusing at first, but once you get the gist of it, you'll figure out that maybe you can buy just the body and then the lens, you can use the one you already have at your house. Or maybe, like you said, a family member has it and you can start shooting for even less money. But yeah. these kits are still under 100. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a great, one of the biggest advantages, I'd say. I, I constantly talk to people who are, are looking to get their first film camera but have a, have, have a DSLR. They have a Canon or a Nikon DSLR and they're, they don't even know that, that they can get a film camera for $20, $30 that uses their lenses. And they're compatible yeah. and like you said, they're easy to start off because you're also already maybe familiar with using that digital camera at home and you just have to get a body. And the good thing is these make shooting film seamless. They were made yeah. for people that were not, you know, all about learning all the rules of photography and so on. They were more like a put a roll of film, go shoot something with a family and get results. And by that, it has all these extra modes of like running and snow yeah. and fireworks, which we all have seen in cameras throughout the years, but are actually really useful if you're new and you you know, want to get those good results. Yep. Don't underestimate how much power is into these little mini computers mm -hmm. that are tech, actually take pictures mm -hmm. onto the film we all love. So buy some Portra, buy some cheap film if you want and load them and you can get re great results. Yeah, and you definitely can still learn photography with these cameras. All of them are capable of fully manual exposure as well. Uh, aperture priority, shutter priority, full program, you know, to, to learn. It, it really gives you the widest breadth of features and options. So yeah, this Minolta uh, 505 uh, comes with a, a 35 to 80 millimeter lens and a 100 to 200 for under 100. Uh, the total is 94. So, I mean, you can how still can you buy batteries. That? Yeah, you can still buy batteries. You can buy lunch. <laughs> and this is a great kit with with a with lenses that cover 35 to 200 millimeter, which is 
basically all you need for photography. Anything outside of that is pretty niche use case. Yeah. And autofocus and, you know, modern coding, so they're going to deliver great sharpness, contrast, color rendition. The next one is, I think, a great point for the people who have DSLRs. It's a Nikon F55, and this camera can use all Nikon lenses up until the year 2000, um, when they switched to uh, AFS and G lenses. Um, but a lot of cameras that were sold around the same time can be used with basically every modern uh, Nikon lens, except for AFP. Um, and this kit with the 35 to 70 millimeter lens is only $84, so that's two lunches that you can get. Um, <laughs> or a couple of rolls of film. Yeah, or a couple of rolls of film uh, and batteries as well. Um, again, full suite of features, program mode, automatic advancing, um, basically anything you might need and tons of other things that you probably don't need or won't notice. Um, and that 35 to 70 is a really good zoom lens. Yeah, and one thing to note, like you said, the rewind, I think is a big feature. Like a lot of people when they shoot film don't really grasp the understanding of the canister and the phone coming out and the yeah. film coming back in. And these cameras that have the manual advance kind of help you learn that sometimes with mistakes of like, I finished my roll and you open the back and suddenly all your film is there and you yeah. realize you've basically screwed that roll <laughs> and all the memories that go with it. These cameras have all the auto features that basically will rewind your roll for you. You can like do double mm -hmm. exposures. Is that something that interests mm -hmm. you? And maybe you're looking for a more creative thing with film. But yeah, these do that for you. So yeah. when you finish the roll, they rewind, you hear some noise, you think it's broken, but it's not. It's just rewinding its film <laughs> back for you to take it to a lab just and get it developed. It. it is scary when you hear yeah, a little it the, bit, first, yeah. the first time. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of them have, like you said, double exposure mode built in. Um, and, and these other creative controls that are, uh, you know, hard to do or like a little DIY hack on older cameras. Uh, they're built in features here on, on more modern cameras. Yeah. Um, yeah, Plus light just, meters and all that stuff that's yeah. really nice. Matrix metering, yeah. all these buzzwords. <laughs> um, <laughs> but really great options for, for pretty cheap as well. And a lot of, like you said, uh, you can make them compatible with lenses you maybe already have yeah. at home or anywhere. And because Nikon, like F mount, has been so popular throughout history and they really didn't change that much, they're compatible with, I don't know how many hundreds of different lenses, so don't. Don't forget that you can choose. Yeah. There's a lot to learn on what's compatible, but if yeah. you can find a kit that's already together, uh, just start with that and then follow from there. Yeah, and that's one of my next projects is breaking down the Nikon lens compatibility because it can be tough if you don't know. Yeah. So yeah, our, our final option here is this Pentax SF10. Uh, the most fungly one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes. The front <laughs> is okay, the back. I'll be honest, this is the ugliest camera we have, in my opinion. I think that it's a little bit gross looking. Um, but I do love this huge LCD screen with the little camera readout. That's that's awesome. Um, but I understand why no other camera has it. Oh, don't break it. I didn't break it. It's the <laughs> flash cover, which is nice that it still has it. So yeah, this, this Pentax SF10 with the Tamron 35 to 90 millimeter lens is only $79. So there's quite a lot of money. You probably could even get another lens. Um, I couldn't find, you know, a telephoto zoom that was uh, autofocus, so uh, just on our site, but it's possible. Um, and again, we went third party for the lens just to save a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, it'll get the job done. This was a high-end camera for the time. Um, probably higher end than either of these two. These were both entry-level cameras, and that was at least mid-range, if not sort of their prosumer model at the time. Um, so really advanced features. Uh, can use a ton of lenses, even more than the Nikon probably with Pentax K mount. Um, yeah, 80 styling that you know you either love it or you hate it. But if you love it, then you love it, and it's a camera that will serve you well. Yeah, I think I, one thing that you'll note, like I said, is the ugly ones have way more features. But because of that ugly factor, if you find them ugly, I, I think they're appealing because I was born in the 80s, so I guess I grew up with this. But it, it has that appeal. But it, they're ugly, and I feel like the uglier they are, or the quirkier they are, the cheaper they can get. And then you can get like really good deals. But do remember, these cameras are all full frame. 
They're all shooting the same roll of film, mm -hmm. basically going to render very, very similar results. It's yep. all going to depend mostly on More the, the, lens. On the light meter and the mm -hmm. lens, yeah. basically. Yeah. If the light meter does a great job, it'll literally make your pictures be great. Yeah. Um, and it's a great starter kit, and that's why I think we should recommend these, and we recommend these for beginners. Yeah, and very few of these have issues with the light meters. Very few modern autofocus cameras, depending on the manufacturer, of course, but a lot of the times, you know, if you pop a battery in and they turn on and fire, they're more or less yeah. in good shape. And one thing with a uh, rule of thumb with electronic cameras, which are the left side of the table, is if they turn on, they usually work because they have little computers yeah. and they basically control the exposure and all this. These were more mechanical, some are, some not, mm -hmm. but they can sometimes, you know, have a bit of more, um, you know, mistakes on one yeah. way or the other. So these, if they turn on and, you know, they rewind, you hear the motor, then you're probably gonna be okay if you're buying secondhand somewhere that you can't really rely on what's happening. One thing you wanna note is also if you can't always carry a you know, few batteries yeah, if you bad. really are in the search, mm -hmm. because obviously without a battery, they're just, you know. Bricks. Yeah, they're just <laughs> this. They're like the same as our glass camera here. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're going into cold weather. Um, or some other adverse conditions, the battery will drain more quickly. Well, we have a video about shooting in cold weather and breaking yes. the myths uh, yes. with Connor here. <laughs> so that's good to know. We'll leave yeah. a link somewhere. Yeah, we'll leave a link somewhere. Somewhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if you don't mind or can get past the uh, chunky appearance of some of these autofocus cameras, especially this Pentax, they're really great options. They're uh, significantly cheaper than older mechanical cameras, and they're pretty widely available because they're more modern and you know a lot of them are working and they can be found all over the place. One recommendation I would say when you're searching for these because of that non-trendy vibe they have is search for a brand, be it the one you like more or the one you like less, and then check the mount and maybe on Wikipedia or Camerapedia you check that and you start looking through those 80s, 90s. Yeah and you'll see cameras that you're like, okay, what is this Canon KISS camera? So you search that and you go on eBay or a store and you find it, and that's how you can sometimes find them as they're not so popular on the articles and it'll be a little hard to find. Or the other way around, you see something on a market, you just Google it and you'll find out if it's a decent camera or there anybody has any reviews on it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use weird batteries, then mm -hmm. some of these use some old batteries that are harder to use yeah. and find, but yeah, that's how I suggest searching. That's how I do it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think searching by, by manufacturer rather than, or even by, on our, on our site, you can do by lens mount, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Uh, with these universal mounts like Pentax K, uh, you can just go into Pentax K and then just sort all the cameras out so that you're just looking at all the manufacturers who made Pentax K cameras and you'll see this SF10, you'll see the Vivitar, you'll see the Shinon, you'll see a whole bunch of other options that aren't Pentax cameras, but use that mount. Um, and yeah, I mean, just browsing through different mounts, it, 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 does, it takes research. That's basically the, the point, is that to find these deals, you can't just watch uh, top 10 camera videos. You can't just uh, follow influencers. You do have to, you know, do a little bit of work you have uh, to, to find them. You have to hit this video to watch it, basically, and understand. Yes. But yeah, I think <laughs> to start, you don't need to go with those. And then later down the road, when you learn and maybe you have a bit more wiggle room and money, you can yeah. go for the ones you like more, maybe that, you know, you're not shy of thinking out with your friends. Like, I I understand if you're, you know, a teenager and you walk out with this and your friend has a Leica, you're going to be probably... You know, they're gonna at least look at you with some interesting eyes, yeah. and uh, but the results will really not be yeah, that different. That's what I was gonna say. Is, is so you'll get twenty good shots out of a roll with that because of the autofocus, and your like a friend will get six. Yeah. Another thing to <laughs> note, and I think it's important, we're talking about beginners, but a lot of yeah. people also should not overlook the fact that these cameras are a great addition if you already have a nice collection and you're going somewhere that you yeah. are not so sure if the camera might survive either for weather conditions, for the activity you're gonna do. Imagine you're going rafting and you're like, I don't wanna take my M6 rafting, but I wouldn't mind throwing one of these in a backpack, you know, yeah. one of those water uh, backpacks that can withstand splashes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're doing sports with your Walkman and you want <laughs> to basically not break a nice camera, you can have one of these. I own a few of these kits, you do too. Yeah. And it's just fun for those days that you kind of feel a little lazier, you don't want to break uh, the, the nicer cameras. So don't overestimate, yeah. you know, 
what these mm -hmm. underestimate, I guess, mm -hmm. what these can do. Mm -hmm. Going on a long hike, doing other things outside, you know, if, if, if you don't want to carry it, shooting, they're also quite light. Shooting your pets and having AF yeah. helps. Uh, your kids. If you don't, kids also, you can. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like we said, it really just, you know, takes some research to find good SLRs from different brands and, and learning a bit about cameras. But we really think that it's worth it, especially for beginners, um, because you don't have to pay those those increasing prices for the hyped cameras just to get that vintage feel, to get those film photos that, that you're looking for. So the barrier to entry to our little hobby is not as high as you might think. Uh, you just got to do a little bit of work. And if $100, you know, all of these kits are around $100. If that's too much, there are other camera types like point and shoots that are a little bit cheaper, but don't offer as much flexibility. Um, we just thought SLRs are, are a good example of a very popular camera type with tons of options out there. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, here at Camera Store, we treat uh, all of these cameras kind of the same, despite them being cheap. Or some of them being cheap or some of them being expensive. All of them get uh, our professional grade testing so you know what you're buying. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for a, a camera that's been tested, a camera that you can trust, uh, but still a camera that's pretty cheap, you can head on over to our site, uh, browse cameras and lenses, um, you know, send us a message if you need any help. I, I'm happy to help anybody find a, a cheap SLR kit. I have many options, as you can see. Um, yeah, yeah, we love all cameras, so yeah. just these are all basically treated the same way as any other camera here. Mm -hmm. And you'll make sure like the descriptions are accurate. We test them all. You yeah. check that there's fungus, that there is certain things on the lenses. Yeah. Not every time they'll have any issue. Like you mentioned, there's articles about mm -hmm. that. But yeah, they're nice cameras. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, again, let us know. Leave a comment below. Um, otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.